you. God fights for you. He is with you and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. evening to you from the ambassador of hope welcome to another episode actually episode number 92 of tuesdays with the ambassador of hope thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to come into your life and to share these few minutes with you and you know something every day above the ground is a good day so long as there's breath in your nostrils and there's a heartbeat in your chest it is not over until God Almighty says it's over. What a blessing. Thank you again for being part of this. And I know that we're going to have a blast today. Because when you get better, things around you get better. We've been doing a series, Managing Your Life. Managing Your Life. And tonight episode is going to be the last in this series. Because uh, we want to move into other things. And so please don't forget that we are live on Facebook, The Ambassador of Hope. Please, please, please like us on Facebook. Go there, like us click on the subscribe subscribe just notification so that you can be notified that sometimes out of the business of our days we forget things we are also live on youtube so follow us on youtube go there follow us click on the notifications so you can hear from us so again like we do all the time anything that is worth hearing is worth sharing so pick up your tablets whatever and let's do it tag at least 10 people do something whilst i welcome a few people then very quickly we're going to get into business tonight. Episode number 92, Managing Your Life. And tonight is going to be awesome. Tonight is going to be awesome. I'm going to talk to you about, you know, another, another side of the whole thing. We're going to turn the, the coin around a little bit. And I'm sure that it is going to be a blast. How you allow the manager to manage your life. What a blessing. Well, let's see who is home today. Shepherd, Shepherd, God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for the great work you do, Joyce. Tanfu Folemu. It says, greetings, family, and everybody share. Please, let's do that. Presidents, how are you? I can't wait to see you, my miracle lady. God richly bless you. I'm so grateful for your life. Mary Frimpong, Auntie Mary, God bless you. God bless you. Prince Ahinasi is watching today. I hope you did well on your test today. Comfort Yamua daughter, God bless you. Nana Rams. All the way from Ottawa, Canada. God bless. The one and only doc, doctor of love, Dr. Benjamin Menudoc. God bless you. I hope Florida is treating you well. 
Pastor David, Pastor David from the Republic of Virginia, God bless you. Yvonne Hotter is watching. Avis Radak is watching. Liz, God bless so much. Charles Ufuri, could you all the way from Delaware? God bless you. The Honorable Nanani Moisi in the house. Nana Morrison, good evening. Kobna Jeff from Accra, Ghana. Oh, blessings to you, all of you. Blessings. And Potaki, God richly bless all of you. It's so good to see all of you. Jonoku Jato is here. Thank you all for saying it's good to see. Yes, it's good to have you too. I've been away for a while. I was touring the whole world. And I have, I have a few things to share with you later. You know, when I was growing up, there was this truck that, passenger truck that had a description at the back, travel and see. It's very important. It's exposure. You see a whole lot of things, but we'll get there at another time. Episode 92, managing your life. Very, very, very important. Rini Ago, God bless. Nanaya Ajiman Jehu, God richly bless you. Our family on, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, our family on YouTube. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. Ethel from the land of 10,000 lakes. God richly bless you. Brandon Apia, good evening. Emmanuel, Emanuela, good evening. Adam, God bless you. Sonia, good evening. Daniel Pencil. Reverend Eric Van Apoy, blessings to you too. Hey, it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time to be alive. God richly bless you. Obed, Obed, God bless. God bless. Listen, we've been doing this thing. We've, we've gone on this charge about managing your life. And uh, this episode, like I said, we want to bring the curtain down on this series. And I trust that you've not only learned, but you also have been applying the truths and the lessons so that you can better manage your life and also become a better version of yourself. It's one thing to, uh, it's one thing to acquire knowledge, but it's a different, totally different ball game to apply knowledge. You can get all the knowledge, but if you don't apply the knowledge, it really doesn't work. And the truth is that, listen, if you do not manage your life, listen to that carefully, I put it there for you. If you don't manage your life, something or someone is going to manage it for you. If you don't learn to manage your life, something will manage it for you. Distractions will manage it for you. All kinds of things will come into your life too. Or somebody will choose to live rent free in your space and pull the strings of your life. You are not a puppet on anybody's strings. You are created with a choice. Listen, you are not a born winner. You are not a born chooser. You are not a born loser. You are a born chooser. You must choose some things in life. And for the past three or so weeks, we've been dealing with, with managing your life. I think last, last week we couldn't do it because I was somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And we consider some key things. There were some, we've done three already. Number one, we establish a foundation. We establish a foundation. And if you, are, if you have not been on, on, on this program, you can always go back. We leave them there for you so you can go back and research. You can go back and listen to them at your convenience, at your leisure. Make notes, learn, ask questions. It's very, very important. And the first time we settled this about your identity. One of the biggest battles you ever face in your life is facing you who are you your identity one of the questions that was asked the carpenter from galilee was who are you who sent you they asked john the baptist who are you are you this are you that are you this are you that who are you and we looked at some five things that you need to do in order to manage yourself we talked about number one you must learn to define yourself then you deny yourself then you develop yourself then you discipline yourself and finally you dedicate yourself. We laid that foundation. Then the next episode, we dealt with how you can manage this thing called anger. How you can manage anger is very important. This has been the, the, the minefield of many potentially amazing lives. Anger, if it's not handled well, it can lead you into all kinds of situations. Then the last episode, the last installment, we talked about managing your time. The feedback has been amazing. And today, I want to turn the coin a little bit for us to look at the other side. And I consider today's thing even more important than you managing your life. And that is allowing the manager to manage your life. Allowing the manager to manage your life. Why do I say so? I say so because just as there are two sides to every coin so there are two sides to managing life 
you're going to find out that in life, there's divine management. Never forget that. Divine management, and then there's also human management. Divine management and human management. You know, in life, we have watchmen, security people. We hire them to protect us. They may have weapons. They may have the ability to, to have surveillance and other things. But the truth of the matter is that they are limited. Their resources are limited. They are human. I hope you understand that. That is why the book says that he that watches over Israel does not slumber nor sleep. Which means there are human watchers and there, are, there is a divine watchman. Different ball game, different category, different, different things. And the past few episodes we have looked at human level of management a lot. Managing yourself, managing anger, managing time. It's all you. But now I want us to look at the divine part. I want us to look at divine because it is so important. You can be so busy doing things with yourself that you forget that there's a bigger hand that you need to help you. Never forget that. Sometimes people talk about the fact, I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made woman. I don't have a problem with that. The only problem I have is that people who are self-made, they tend to worship their maker. You worship yourself. But you didn't get here by accident. Somebody made you. Somebody put you here. Somebody kept you. You may have set the alarm clock to go to bed. The alarm clock went off okay, but let me tell you, it was God who woke you up. Because there are many people who set the alarm clock, the alarm clock went off and they never woke up. Because during the night, death laid seed to their soul and they had, they had to cross that black river of death. And so understand that you always need a bigger hand to help you manage life. Like you know, for the past couple of weeks, I've been away in Europe. You know, it's like I said, it's another thing. We'll talk about that, but we want to talk about five European countries. And it is not just a matter of a vacation. It's not just a matter of just going somewhere and just laying down to vegetate. No. I had a dual purpose also to learn, to get exposure, to see things, to see other places and how things happen. And you know, historically, Europe has done a lot with Christianity. Historically, Europe has exported Christianity more than any other continent. Even though Europe now is post-Christian, post Europe is now a dark continent as it were. The truth of the matter is that they have a wonderful heritage. And one of the things that I really took my time to look at everywhere that we went into the cities was to look at their cathedrals and their historical things about missionary work and everything. And man, you, I'm sure you've been to those places. Some of you have been to those places. The great and the ornate architecture. I looked at the great cathedrals. My mind was boggled like, how did men and women build such things when there were no computers? The effort, the backbreaking work. Can you imagine what Michelangelo went through to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? It's, it's just incredible. It's amazing. We looked at the works of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, da Vinci, I beg your pardon. I went to the city of, of Malaga and I, I went to the museum of Picasso. That celebrated artist. Honestly, I could draw better than him, but I don't know why he's Picasso. But I looked at him and I said, well, I can draw better than that. You know, we look at all these things. Then, as, as I looked at these things and I thought through, I also thought about you. That men and women took their time out of their creativity, their thoughts to honor God Almighty and the Son Jesus. They sculpted these structures. They, they built these amazing and imposing edifices. The, the sculptures, the things that they, they have stood the test of time. Amazing. Then I realized that all the people that collaborated to build these things were masters in their own right. That is why they are celebrated. Michelangelo is celebrated. I saw his statue of David. I think the other day, not too long ago, there's been a, a whole fury about the statue of David. Somebody got fired because she was teaching it in a history class. I, I stood there and I looked at I said, this is amazing. The things that they did, the art of Leonardo da Vinci, of Raphael. Oh, it's like, wow. 
And it's a mastery, the skill, the time that they spend. I understand that Michelangelo, he lay on his back for years until he almost lost his eyesight. Painting every intricate detail. One time there was a little thing that didn't really, was, wasn't perfect. And he spent all night. And somebody said, the ceilings are so high, who is going to see it? And he said, I see it. That is, that is a determination not to overlook any detail. And as I looked at it, just as it took mastery, skill, and time for these great masters to produce these great masterpieces, I realized that the divine master, God, is also working on you to become a masterpiece. He's managing you to become everything that he ordained for you to be. I want to ask to read a little passage. It's one of the ones that I really like about the dealings of the Creator and us. And it's found in the book written by the crying prophet Jeremiah. In chapter number 18, we're going to do the first six verses. It's going to be amazing. He said, the word of the Lord came to me. Anytime the word of the Lord comes to you, is to expose you to something, is to open your eyes. And he said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Get up and go to the porter's house. Know where the porter, you know. And there I will cause you to hear my... Go to the porter's house and you hear my words. Go to the porter's house and you hear my words. Many times, God doesn't have to speak to speak. He opens your eyes to see something and out of the scene, he's speaking to you. Never forget that. So let's go ahead. And the, the prophet said that when I went down to the porter's house, there was the porter. He was making something at the wheel, at the porter's wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad. It was flawed. Something was wrong with it in the hand of the porter. Did he throw it away? No. He says he made it again into another vessel. Now note this. As it seemed good to the porter to make. Don't forget that. Let's go ahead. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying... O house of Israel, O whoever is listening to me on Ambassador of Hope, can I not do with you as this porter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the porter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. What comfortable, comforting words these are. Think about it. The porter, God was showing him something. God was showing Jeremiah out of the ordinary because many times the Lord God meets us. In the ordinariness of our day, the mundane times. And he's showing how the master shapes us according to his own specifications. The porter was at work. He was doing something that was in his mind. He was producing it. But there was a flaw in it. He didn't throw the thing away. He didn't throw it away because there was a mistake. No. God doesn't work that way. But he does you all over again. I realize that you and I are living in a world that can be very confusing. We live in a world where you, you, you struggle to find what is real. The, 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 the ministry of fake and the ministry of truth has so bled in their lives that it is difficult to decipher. You know, reality TV. Reality TV is not real. The makeup. People, now we manage our image on social media. That sometimes you meet people and you look at their image on social media and you look at the real and you wonder what transformation is this? You don't know what you are getting. Today, relationships are shallow. Mark Zuckerberg has given people 5,000 friends and yet you and I know that when you are in trouble, not even one comes to your, to your aid. Today, the mad race to be number one. The struggle. Who are your followers? Who are you influencing? You are doing this. And so in the end, Many people have ended up living a lie. People are afraid, are afraid to be found out. We are walking around wearing masks. Now, I want to tell you a fact, and I'm going to put it there. Look at verse number four. Then I'll make that statement. Look at verse number four in Jeremiah chapter 18. Look, look at it. He says that the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the water. If, I, if we can look at it at the new living, in the New Living Translation or in the message, I think they will throw more light on it. Let's see if we can. The New Living Translation says, But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. The vessel, the jar he was making 
did not turn out as he has hoped. How many have not been sent on to church, baby dedication, naming, whatever great things have been said about you when you were born, when you were living home, things have been said, but it did not turn out as he had hoped. But that is the, not the end of the story. Let's look at, let's look at the, 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 the message, if we can get that. He says that, so I went to ensure enough, the porter was there, working away, and whenever he put that he was working, whenever it turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you are working with clay, the porter will simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. OMG! Look at that. So what I want to say, make a blanket statement is that we are all flawed vessels. We are all flawed. Yes, you can put on your makeup. You can have the nicest haircut. You can have the nicest hair. You can extend your eyelashes, have new brows, paint your lips, do everything, wear the most expensive clothes, drive the most expensive cars, live in the most expensive gated community. We are all flawed. We have become experts in hiding our flaws. The truth is that the, the word sincere has, has been lost on us. When I talk about sincere, sincerity, it means to be genuine. It means to be straightforward. It means to be credible. It means to be honest. But you and I know that you cannot take people's word for that. In fact, the word sincere, that word sincere, comes from the Latin root, root sinicera. That is where sincere, the English bought it from the Latin. Sinicera, which means without wax. Without wax. What does it mean? In ancient times when the Romans, you know, when they had sculptures like we are talking about. And sometimes as they went about their business, sometimes there will be a, a crack. There will be a flaw in what they were creating. And rather than throwing away and, and losing money, they will use wax and, and just, just place it inside where the crack is, the flaw is. And paper it so that you don't find it. But when people are going to buy these things, what they do is that they lift up whatever they are going to buy against the sunlight. And no matter how much sun, wax is there, they are going to find it out. And so when they look at a subject or something they want to buy and they turn around and there's no wax, they say, Sene Sarah, it is without wax. It means it is flawless. And that is how we have become. Our bedding, my bedding today, is to announce to you that like the clay in the hand of the porter, you are a divine project. You are a divine project. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because people are broken. If you haven't met humanity, you see the reason why we don't see the brokenness of humanity is because we don't take our time to find out. Today we greet people, how are you doing? And it's like we don't expect an answer. We are right on our way. We don't really stop to find out what is aching people. People are, they come to our churches, they come to our parties, they come to our homes, and they are hurting. The terminology is there, the smiles are there, the makeup is there, but underneath people are really broken. We live in a broken and a confused world. People are going through pain. People are under threats. People are going through disappointment. People are confused. People are stuck in cycles of defeat. But let me tell you something. You are a project. God has started a project. And that project is you. It is you. You will not break down, but you will break through. And I want you to consider and understand that no matter how much flaw you have, remember that the porter did not throw the clay away. Remember the message that says that the same clay that didn't turn out well. The porter used that same clay to make one according to his specification. Look at it there. He said it turned out badly, as sometimes happens. Sometimes things happen, my friend. People don't, people don't get into trouble many times because they ask. Well, some do. But I believe that the majority of people go through things in life not because they signed up for it. Be before you sit on your high chair and become judgmental on other people, before you begin to point out the faults of other people, please understand them. The North American Indians, they have a proverb that says that never judge somebody until you have walked in their moccasins for two moons. Never judge anybody until you have walked in their moccasins, that is their shoes, for two moons. You've gone through two cycles, then you can begin to start. Sometimes we don't, we don't take our time to figure out why people behave the way they behave. There are things that make people do what the things that they do. Nobody signs up to mess up. Nobody signs up to fail. 
Nobody sighs and nobody delights in that. But sometimes life throws people a circle. Let us sometimes be considerate and have time for people. Some people's deliverance are instant. Others are a process. We must still help people. You will not break down, but you will break through. Now, what does to look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 6? The great apostle Paul wrote something very powerful. He said, be confident of this very thing. Confidence. Confidence means that you respect everybody, but you don't feel inferior to anybody. Confidence is not arrogance. Confidence is humility that has accepted that I respect everybody, but I'm not inferior to anybody. And Paul says, this is my confidence. That the one who has begun a good work in you, the porter, remember, he has started that project in you. He will complete it. He will finish it until the day of the Lord Jesus. Let's see what Dr. Peterson says in the message translation. He says that there's never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you will keep at it to bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. If we are run around the building for six times, he said he will keep at it. He will keep at it. God will not abandon you. God will not throw you away. God has started a project and that is you. So out of Philippians 1 and 6, let me lift up four things for you to note and I'll step out of your way today. Number one that I have learned and learned this in your life. Remember that I said that God has started a project and that project is you. Building you again. Refining you. Doing something. So my first thing that I want you to note is that God is the originator of the project. Remember Paul said in Philippians, he said, be confident of this very thing. That he, the one, the he, that is God. Not a human, not your father, not your mother, not your prophet, not anybody but God. Nobody but God who has started your life. And beloved, this God, he has a track record of being an awesome project originator and a project manager. If you don't believe me, go back and check the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 1. <coughs> I beg your pardon. For five creative days, God took on a monstrous project called the universe. He spoke them into manifestation. We don't know how long one creative day was because sometimes we try to bring the Gregorian calendar into the Bible and we've made mistakes with that. He never told us, but day number one, day number two, he was out of nothing, out of the expanse of nothing. He was creating, let there be, let the, he was, it was just, a, it was a monstrous project called the universe. In fact, we are still discovering the universe. As we make better telescopes, as we, we make better discoveries, we are discovering aeons and aeons and aeons and aeons of creation. We haven't even begun to touch the borders of it. But, in spite of everything, none of them is amazing as Project You. You as a human being, amazing. That is why after he created you, he sat back and he said, wow, this is very good. This is amazing. God created everything before he brought you to tell you how important you are. If you don't believe me, let, let's read together. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 18. We'll look at it from the New Living Translation and maybe we'll look at the message. Amazing. The psalmist says, you made all my delicate, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body. Can you imagine? You knit me together in my mother's womb. Job, the old sage, asked that, can you understand how a baby is formed in the womb of the mother? It's just amazing. And he says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. That is, listen, don't give the keys to your life to anybody to, to, to talk about you that you are nothing and you are black and you are white and you are tall, you are short. You are, no, no, no. God has made you wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. And he says, you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion in your mother's womb. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, my God, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded. In, listen, God doesn't sleep and wake up in the morning, look at you and try to figure out what he's going to do with you. Before you were born, he knew you. There's a path for you. You have to discover it. 
He says, every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God? You see, when people talk and have terrible thoughts about you, look at what God thinks about you. Precious thoughts. So why do you worry when they throw shades? Why do you worry when they attack you? They will not put your name there, but if you have the brains of a freshwater fish, you know they are addressing you. Why do you worry? Ignore them. He says that your thoughts about me, they are innumerable. They cannot be numbered. Then he concludes by saying that I can't even count them. They outnumber the, giant, the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. I wonder what Dr. Patterson says in the message translation. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You are breathtaking. God, you are bad. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. And he says, I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted. You see that? How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Who does that? Listen, you and I, we are creative. Only God is the creator. Creativity means we take something that is there to do things. But a creator takes nothing to do something out of it. Look, like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life, all prepared. Before I even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Listen, my friend. No matter what life may have thrown at you, no matter how things may have turned out, the porter has originated the project. And that project is you. So we go to the second point. Remember, we, I'm lifting it from Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this one thing, that he that has begun this good thing. So the second thing is that the project is a good project. God working on you is a good thing. It's a good project. It means it's of a high standard. You know, there are some projects, there are projects, and there are projects. When you are building, they have kind of maybe two or three phases. You know, the first phase, they say, is the, is the, is the, is the foundation, then they, they do the block work and that kind of thing. It's not as expensive as the next phase. I've been through a few building projects, and I know what I'm talking about. You know, the first phase may not be that as bad. It's the second phase, the finishing phase, where they begin to put in all the bells and the whistles. That is amazing. And it's a high standard. Remember when Jeremiah was sent to look, when the first one didn't meet his, the project manager's specifications, he didn't throw it away. He reworked it to his own high standards. It is, you see, that's, that word good, he that has got this good, that word good is the same word that we see in Genesis chapter 1. And the Lord God created and God saw that it was good, high standards. And hear me, God's good works, they start Number one, with salvation. Salvation is the best work that God can give. How a flawed, terrible sinner all of a sudden can come in contact with the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus. And it sets you on a way to become a better version of yourself. I'm talking about salvation. That is when God becomes your personal God, your father. He's no longer remote. He's no longer removed. There's a living relationship between you and him. That is when you begin to hear his voice. He speaks to you. That is when you begin to walk in love. Because when you are, you are saved, you love the brethren. Listen, if you are walking about and even hate one person, you need to consider your walk with God. Hating one person is one person too many. One hatred too many. You must walk in love. I'm not saying that everybody should be your friend, but hate nobody. That is when you begin to experience true joy. There's no generation that is joyless like this one. Because you know something? You think joy and happiness are the same. No. Happiness comes from, to you as a result of things around you. But joy comes from your inside. It's a fruit of the spirit. Things may not be all okay, but you are still joyful. That is why you experience peace. Peace is not the absence of war. In the midst of war, there can be peace. 
Listen, no matter what stage you may be in today, it is good. And if your stage right now is good, then I feel sorry for the enemy when he brings you to a completion. So number one, remember, the project has been originated by the God himself, you. He started you, then whatever he's doing with your life. Number two, it's a good project. It is a good project. Look at it. It's a matter of perspective. You may not see it, but he sees it. And then the third thing, he that has begun this good work in you, he that has begun, which means it is an ongoing project. He has begun it. He will finish it. Please listen. You are an ongoing project. The creator, the master has not finished with you. He is working on you. So I'm begging you, don't permit anybody to conclude on you. He was a Jacob. Everybody knew that he was a supplanter. But overnight, he had become an Israel. There's an Israel in you, clothed in the clothing of a Jacob. People are afraid of you. People think you are abrasive, you are belligerent. You are feisty, you are everything. But there's an Israel on the inside of you. And the master, the porter, is bringing it out. Like the master sculptor, chip by chip, block by block, he's working on your life. <laughs> A man was walking down a dusty road in a little town. And as he passed by the mansion of a very rich man, he realized that there was a lot of work going on on the grounds, on the compound of the man's house. They were cutting down trees, they were trimming things, and he saw this log that they had cut and they put it by the side of the road. So he walked up to the work, work, workmen and asked them, hey, do you have any use for this piece of Wood. They said, no, 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 we're just going to throw it away. And the man said, can I have it? They said, well, you can help yourself. We even need help to throw these things away. So this old man took this nice little piece of timber, this tree, and took him to his house. Later did people know that he was a master sculptor. He set a tree up. He brought out his tools, hammer, chisel, this, that. And gradually, for days, he began to work on the wood. And later... By letter, by letter, by letter, as he chipped away, as he chopped away, as he played, as he moved, a beautiful horse began to come out of the woodwork. And after some days, after he had finished working, out came this magnificent, prancing horse, beautiful. And the man set it in front of the house. Not too many days later, this rich man was passing by and he saw this beautiful beautiful wooden sculpture of this horse and he said wow i need to get this they went to knock on the door and asked the man is this thing for sale the man said yes he named them the rich man a price and the man gladly bought it what am i trying to convey to you one man's junk is another man's treasure one man's junk what they were going to throw away was another another listen let me tell you lady somebody dumped you somebody thought you were not good enough you are somebody's treasure let me talk to you gentlemen Somebody thinks that you are nothing. You, 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 you don't measure up. Listen, don't go kill yourself. Don't commit suicide. One man's junk is another man's treasure. Never forget that. They threw you away because you didn't matter. They threw away because you didn't act the part, look the part, and that kind of thing. There's treasure in you. It had to take the eye of a master to bring that horse out. The man had a different eye. He knew the potential. Oh, the, the potential called a horse is locked up in a rejected piece of wood. Let me tell you, there is potential on the inside of you. There's greatness locked out in trouble, locked, locked, locked in trouble. Today, you, you have all kinds of mess and everything about you and, and things are not going right with you. But let me tell you something, my friend. Let me tell you something, my friend. Don't give up on yourself. This is an ongoing project. Letter by letter. How does God do that? How does God do that? Let me give you three ways that God shifts things away in the ongoing. Number one, he changes you. He builds you up again through his word. When you are exposed to the word of God, it changes your thinking. The word of God affects your character. The word of God informs your dealings. It cleans you up. It delivers you. It builds you up. The apostle Paul says something in Acts chapter 20 verse 32. He said, I commend you to God and to the work of his great the word the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those 
who are sanctified. The word of God is able to build you up. It cleans you. In partnership with the Holy Spirit, it shapes you. He tells us that we are being shaped. We are being built as a habitation of God in the Spirit. He also shapes you through people. I beg your pardon. God builds you through people. Listen, there are people that God will allow to come into your life. There are people that God will send you to who will be used to sharpen your rough edges. I'm telling you. Listen, not every person that you consider bad is bad. Not everybody that you consider wicked is wicked. There are people that God will use to shape you. Remember Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17? As iron sharpens iron, <coughs> so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. As iron sharpens iron, so the man, so sometimes people come into our lives to sharpen us. Their excellence reveals our mediocrity. Don't get jealous. It is to build you. There are people who help you. There are questions. There are example. They help you to reveal yourself, to introduce yourself to yourself. Then on the other side, there are people who come into your life to open doors for you. Don't forget them. Don't forget the people who have helped you. Don't be an ingrate. Don't become somebody who just drops everything that people have done to help you get there because of maybe one or two mistakes that they made. No. Barnabas was used to open doors for Paul. And after that, Paul had all the notoriety. We never heard of Barnabas again. But I believe that one day when they stand before the Lord, Barnabas will always have a part in Paul's reward. Never forget that. Listen, when God wants to lift you, he sends you a person. Somebody is carrying your blessing. What God didn't give to you, he has put it in somebody. And he brings that person into your life. And today on this episode, I pray that God will open your eyes, not only to see them, but will also help you to meet them. There are people who meet their helpers, but because they don't look the part, they are not able to recognize it. You need perception. Remember the, 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 this Shunammite one in the Bible in 2 Kings? A great man, Elisha, passed by their house all the time until one day she said to the husband, listen, I perceive, I perceive, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Listen, don't join the rejectors. Don't join the denigrators who have formed an association of rejecting the servants that God brings into your life to help you. It will help you. So God builds you through his word. He builds you through people. And sometimes he builds you through the trials and the obstacles that you face in life. Why would he say count it all joy when you face trials? Why? It doesn't make sense. Why should I count it all joy? Until I realize that there's always purpose in the madness. And so it is not so much the trouble. It is not so much whatever is happening. It is your attitude because your attitude will determine the benefit you get or otherwise. I want to put a statement there for you. You never know your metal. You never know who you are until you are tested. You never know who you are. Like somebody said it in modern day American English. You are like a tea bag. You are of no use until you fall into hot water. And so again, my friend, don't forget you are a project. You are an unfinished project. You are an ongoing project. You are on the production line of God. You are a divine agenda. Oh yes, you and I are not perfect yet. We are only forgiven, but we are on our way. We are on the potter's wheel. And one day, the finished result will manifest. So again, let me run you through the three things. Number one, God is the originator of the project, you. Number two, that project is good. High standards. Number three, it's an ongoing project. The porter didn't throw the, the thing away. No, he's doing it all over again. And let me give you the final one, and I'll step out of your way this evening. He will complete the project. He will finish the project. He will finish the project. Listen, if there's one thing that I have learned about this great God, it is this. He always finishes what he starts. God always finishes what he starts. So please don't compare God to humans. 
Because humans, we have the penchant of starting things, but we, def we never finish. You realize that there are monuments that are scattered over the panorama of human history. People who started things. The very worst of human beings are people who start things and never finish. That is why I tell people, listen, that in fact, the, the, the capital from Galilee said, before you embark on a project, you first have to sit down and count the cost. A lot of us don't do that. We just go right in there and we end into trouble. Many people start and don't. We are human. If I let me give you some reasons why I, we, we start but we don't finish. Number one is because we lack resources. Sometimes we have good intentions. We start things but we are never able to finish because we lack resources. We don't have the wherewithal. Money gets finished. People get finished. Human capital gets finished. But listen, God does not lack anything. He said the gold is mine, the silver is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills, they are mine. Number two, we don't finish prayer sometimes because we are just impatient. In this fast today, fast is the essence. Fast, 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 go, go, go. No. A lot of us are in, in, impatient. And so we have become impatient in the hospital of life. The third reason why we don't finish is because sometimes we, we change our minds too easily. We forget what God told us in the, in the light. So when we go through the dark, we forget it. And so we change our minds. And the fourth reason is we give up. We just up, pick up our ball, and we leave the game. We just give up. And sometimes we don't finish because, as humans, we are finite. We die. Oh yes, we die. We are not going to live here forever. We die. But this great God is not like you and I. He does not die. He is always on time. Did you hear what I said? He is always on time. And when I say on time, his time, not your time. His calendar, not your calendar. He has all the resources. And whatever he has promised you, whatever he has started, he will complete it. Don't give up. Don't throw up your hands and surrender to situations and circumstances. He that has begun this good work, the great manager, his plans are, are great. He will do it. A good work has begun. You are the good work. God himself started it. He will never abandon the work. Never. You know, as I taught the great cathedral of Cadiz in Spain, beautiful, on it, amazing. And the tour guide told us that at a point, the project stalled for 30 years. For 30 years, it stalled. Until the city said, no, we got to get together, galvanize our resources, and let's build this. 30 years, because there was no resources. It was abandoned. In the city of Florence, in Italy, I saw the same thing. The first place I went, Cathedral something, something. You know, we, we went there, and we realized that there, there were like two faces of it. The facade of the cathedral was marble. But the sides and other things were some old one. Up. And the lady told us that they started in, I think, 1200 or something. And it laid down for about almost a thousand years before they, 500 years away before they came to complete it. Lack of resources. Human, human, we are finite. But God doesn't abandon his work. You know why? Heaven has an interest in your life. Heaven has an interest in your life. That is why in spite of all the things that you have been through, you are still here. Let me throw one last scripture at you and I'm going to step out of your way. I'm jet lagged in a way. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10, look at the New Living Translation. And then we'll look at the, 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 the passion. In Ephesians 2 and 10, he says that we are God's masterpiece. These past few weeks, I've seen some masterpieces, what we call masterpiece. Sometimes I wonder, but they are still masterpieces. They are priceless. They are, they are national treasures. They are global treasures. They are not for sale under any situation or circumstance. In one city, there was an exhibition of Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. His exhibition, his water lilies and things. They were, I said, whoa. Fat. My wife, mommy and I, we, we went into one, the Picasso, the other place. Uh, there, there was an exhibition. And it was just mommy and me. And there were people following us. At every stop, they were just eyeing us. Like, you don't touch this thing. They were, uh, the place was so pristine. It was just she and I taking that tour. And yet, we had a whole human... The, she wouldn't talk. Just every place we stop, she stops. We move, she moves. It's like, you don't touch anything here. Human things, what about you? 
Angels are watching over you. God has an interest in your life. Do you know how many measles they are tempted to hit you with? Listen, when you go on your knees and you are praying and you are praising God, not only must you thank him for the things that you know, but thank him for the things he didn't allow you to see. Ephesians 2.10 says we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Look at the passion. Let me show you something. We are his poetry. The, the King James says that we are his workmanship, poema. We are his poetry. A recreated people who fulfill the destiny he has given each of one. For we are joined to Christ Jesus, the anointed one. Listen, you are God's poetry. He's painting you. It's a masterpiece. He's working on you. He hasn't finished yet. You are a project. Don't give up on yourself. Don't throw in the towel. How old are you? There's the life. Remember on the potter's wheel? He didn't throw the clay away. God will not reject you forever. The same thing that was, that was flawed, he put it back and did it according to his high standards. Let me tell you something and I'm done. People may be able to hinder you temporarily, but nobody can delay, derail the divine project called you. Whatever is done against you is only temporary. Weeping may endure for just a night, but joy comes in the morning. There was an auction. They were selling things. The auctioneer will pick up something, make an announcement, people will bid. I bid this, I bid that. Then came the turn of an old, dusty violin. He said, who will bid for this? Oh, we don't care. I mean, we want to bid for better things. So just to get that thing out of the way, somebody from the house said, I bid $5. Another said, well, I bid 10. Another said 20. Another bid 50. Then it went to 100. They said, who bid higher than 100? Higher than 100. And he picked up his gavel and said, 100, go in. 100, go in. Then there was a little movement at the back and everybody turned. And there was this old, bent man walking towards the front. And everybody watched him, wondering what he was going to do. He walked up to the auctioneer and he said, can I have the violin? He said, sure. What do you want to say? I just want to test to see whether it, it's really good. Remember, the auction had gone into 100. It has been bid at 100, ready to go. Last strike of the gavel and it's gone. And this old man took the violin, blew the dust off it, took the bow and started playing. And the music that came out of the violin was enthralled. I'm sure it was enough to let the angels of God stand and bow their head in awe. The, the music that came out of that thing was like, whoa! And after he had finished, he gave back the violin to the auctioneer. And the man asked, who will bid for it? And somebody says, I bid $50,000. And it went, and it went, and until somebody said, what made the difference? It's, it was only 100. And, what made the, and the man said, it's because a master touched it. Maybe people think you are a broken valley. You are dusty. You are useless. But let me tell you, when you fall into the hands of the master, what he brings out of you becomes priceless. He that has begun this good thing, he will finish it. He will finish it. He will finish it, my friend. He will finish it. Don't hide in your bedroom and let what people have said about you break you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't let that ministry, don't let that church, don't let that project that it didn't work out define who you are. Don't look at the size of somebody's enterprise. And use it to measure yourself. You are a divine agenda. You are different. Don't let what people say become gospel. Because what people think about you is not as important as what God Almighty says about you. Listen to me, my friend. Every day of your life, say to your, look at yourself in the mirror. As you are doing your makeup, as you are shaving, say to yourself, I am God's masterpiece. 
I am a divine project. He has started and he will finish it. Remember, he said that being confident of this one thing, that the one who has started, you see, there are people who start things with us. They get angry with us somewhere along the line and they drop us and they walk away. But he who has begun this good thing, he will complete it. Never forget that. I hope you have been blessed. God richly bless you. And listen to this over and 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 over. Next week, God willing, we'll move into other matters. If you need prayer, if you need for us to talk to you, we are here to do that. I want to remind you about a couple of things. ISI 2023 is coming up. It's our flagship conference. I'm going to pray for you before you go. Please wait. Please save the date. Pastors, businessmen, businesswomen, leaders, whoever, there's a leader in Ukraine for expression. Come and sit down and let somebody talk to you. Let somebody break something out of you. July 19th to the 23rd, we start on a Wednesday night. Some of the great leaders of our generation, you know, every year I assemble them. This year will be different. We have a lot of hands on. Somebody knows what you don't know. Somebody has done what you haven't done yet. Sit down and let somebody help you. Invest in yourself. Invest. The greatest investment you can ever make is to invest in yourself because wherever you go, you carry your whole self there. It's not a conference that we teach people how to build big things. No, God doesn't build big things. God builds big people and big people go to build big things. Everything around you is an expression of you. Come and let's help you. Come and, come and connect with other people. Come and make friends. Come and make connections. It's a Wednesday to Sunday. On the Saturday, Nathaniel Bassey and other gifted minstrels, there will be a concert. It's going to be amazing. We'll put out more information there for you. Oh man, it's going to be amazing. I don't think you want to miss this. I don't think you want to miss this. And listen, if you want to help us, if you want to partner with us, we'll be very happy to do that. Just, just go out there and just, our oh, giving platforms are there, Cash App, Zelle, whatever, one minute. And then I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you and then I am done. I'm done. Please don't run away. Just take your prayers before you go to bed. You take your prayers. If you, are, if you are on continental USA, you know every week there's been about two or three people who have given. That's fine. That's okay. Like I told you, everything goes towards our leadership project in Africa. Because when we get it right, we shall become right. There's nothing wrong with Africa that can be solved with what is... There's nothing wrong with Africa that cannot be solved with what is right with Africa. You say, what is right with Africa? I am right with Africa. And we'll solve our problems one break at a time. God bless you. Thank you so much. The same number for Zell and Advanced Life. Don't forget our logo, the concentric circles. If you're in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, whatever, you can do Vodafone Cash. 024-821-4472. Thank you. And all that remains for me to say is to pray for you. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I thank you for everyone on this platform. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for what they have heard today. I pray that you will use these words that you place on my mouth to build a bigger people and make them a better version of themselves. Let nobody feel re so rejected that they lose their fight to win. I pray that God will strengthen you along the way. That God will help you little by little to unearth the greatness that come out of the earth. Like gold is mined out of, out of debt so you come out of the dirty places and become great. God keep you tonight. Sleep well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again. I love you. My name is Frank Ofosuapia, your ambassador of hope. Bye-bye.